Hey everybody, Boots in the Roots here with another quick practical tip for your small farm and garden without all the chit chat and giggling. Continuing in our fencing series, we are at getting wire hung up and stretched. Let's take a look at uh, where we're at in that process. So we've got the five foot Two inch by four inch no climb horse fencing going up. This particular one is uh, Beckert Gaucho 40. And let's take a look at the tools we have. We've got one and a quarter inch fence staples. Now technically these are either left-handed or right-handed. I believe you hold it like a U and this I believe would be the a left-handed one if the cut was on the other side it'd be a right-handed and uh, you're supposed to put these in a certain way if it's a left hand you put it in at an angle like that if it's right-handed you put it in an angle like that I've never had any issue with them I just put them in usually at a slight angle. I've never paid attention to left-handed, right-handed. Nothing's ever pulled out or come out. A hammer, uh, kind of important. Use a hammer that's got the, the cut face there. Just less chance of slipping off the staple. And gloves, wire cutter. So I have prepped the ground here where the fence is going. My tea stakes are in, which you will have seen in a previous video. And I've cleared the ground out all along here, get all the vegetation out, get it as level as you can, rocks out of the way. And for that, you can use whatever tool. Got a Maddox here, shovel, stirrup hoe here get that all cleared out and ready to roll now this roll here is 100 feet it's not going to be long enough I'm going to have to do a splice which will be in a another section of the video or another video by itself but I've got this standing up and start getting this tacked off let's take a look start at the bottom Make sure you get it down as close as you can to your concrete. And I've traditionally done every other wire. And, you know, you should probably stagger these like I have here. Less chance that this might split. If you had them all just continuing in a straight line, you could get a split in the post. Uh, never really had a post blow apart. But if you're doing best practices, that's kind of what you want to do. And um, so we tack it off on the horizontal wires here. Uh, you don't want to tack it off here on these verticals because uh, these knots here are not really that tight. They're just holding this wire in place. So if you tack it here and then you go stretch this, these end wires can just all pull right out and then the fence is, gets loose. So for this end post, just get them in nice and tight. You don't need to bury them into the wood, but get them real snug. Other, other staples further on down the line, you're gonna keep them a little more loose so the fence can expand and contract in heat. But just work your way from the bottom up Try to keep it as straight as possible. And let's do that and then move on to the next step. We'll be right back. Okay, we've got the wire tacked up to the four by four. And depending on the height of your fence, you may get to a situation where you can't do every other, obviously, your top has to have a staple in it. So this one wound up being here. I just did another one here. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to do a staple every wire, you certainly can do that. 
one thing I didn't mention before about um, getting ready to hang this is this two by four wire has a smoother side and a side that's got a, a sharper side. And it's not terrible sharp, but the smooth side should go to any animals you're trying to protect. If you're just putting up for deer or whatever, it doesn't matter. But if you have horses or fiber animals and they'll rub against this, this smooth side here uh, should be to the side that the animals will be at. So we've got that tacked. The next thing we want to do is get this rolled out. Now, if you had several people, you could probably just unroll this and carry it along. If you're by yourself, what you got to do is roll this out a ways and then lay it flat and then just roll it off along the ground as you go. So I'm going to pause here and get that and be right back. Okay, I've got the wire tacked on that far end and I've laid the wire down, rolled it out to here. And because of our layout and we have a wood post coming up at just under the 100 foot mark, we don't have to do a splice. There's not enough wire left over here to bother. If you had a lot of leftover, um, maybe is enough to use for a gate or some other project. Generally, you would, um, on a long run, have a wood post with the bracing at the 100 foot mark, and then you would tack your next roll on there and then continue on to the next braced post. Okay, we're getting set up to stretch this first short little run here. Let me talk about the tools required here for a minute. We have a come along. This one here. Not sure what the strength of it is, but these are pretty much anywhere at a hardware store, big box store. And then one other thing you're gonna to have to make is this stretching bar. So this is two two by fours. This one's about uh, five feet tall. And it's got four holes drilled in it. And you wanna space those out so that the bolt you know, goes through one of the holes of the wire. These are three quarter inch by, I think around five inch, five and a half inches. Okay, so you can see the location of those. And you want washers on both sides. So run that through the wire. Oh, I should also mention that down here in the bottom, you want to bevel this edge here because that will help it slide along the ground and, uh, and it helps you know which end to put the bolt in. You can cut that and then you know which ends go where. Okay, next step here, I've got the come along hooked up to my Jeep. Now, if you did not have a vehicle or could not get a vehicle out to where you were you have to get creative so you may need a long piece of chain and go to a tree or if you were on a long run and there was virtually nothing to pull and you couldn't get a vehicle you would have to pull to your next concrete pole just wrap your chain around the base of a pole like way down there that next one and uh, then you would pull to the base of that and hopefully it won't uh, pull out your post or snap it off. It, it can happen, but if you keep it down low and uh, don't go too crazy, you generally could do that. But I am able to get a vehicle close. So I've got it to the Jeep there and then just run the end of the come along around the two by four, sorry for the shadows here blocking the view. 
So that's gonna come around and then just hook to itself here. I've gotta let out a little more cable. And generally you want that in the middle of your pulling bar. Now, depending on how it starts to pull, you may see that the top is going over first or the bottom's going over first. You may have to adjust where this is up or down slightly to get the fence to pull straight. Also, you may have noticed this is a special case here because I'm on this weird corner and the uh, nailing is gonna happen on this face here. When you have that pulled tight, you're not gonna be able to push on that to get it nailed off. So you have to pull in front of that and get it as close to as you can here and very tight. And then this will still be loose and you can just push this over and nail it. When you release the tension, yes, it's going to uh, untension the whole fence a little bit, but if you get this bar to pull and get as close as you can to here before you push this over, once you let that off, it shouldn't be too bad. And you can always go and and uh, tension each of these wires with the hammer trick where you come in there with the hammer and uh, bend these down just go work your way and, and put a kink in that in several different places and that well it should get your tension back so i'm going to get this set up here and uh, get the first little tension on it. i'll be right back Okay, I've got the first little bit of tension on and a couple things to mention here. There is obviously an element of danger uh, under with a tensioned cable like here. Um, you want to make sure these bolts are super tight pinching that wire. And obviously there's a chance this these two by fours could break, although this one's probably done 50 pulls and it's just fine. But be aware that things could snap under tension. So you definitely wanna have safety glasses, don't have children around. So once this will stand up without falling over, you need to go back along here and, and push all this wire up to the base of your T-posts. And if it starts to flop over on you, you just need to get a little more tension. But just make sure everything is clear along the base and that it's not gonna drag on anything or catch on rocks. Make sure the line's clear. I got a little dirt here I need to clear out. And then you wanna start watching to see if the, if the wires are lining up with your post. So this is where if it starts to get crooked, you may need to adjust where it's connected here up or down to get these wires back straight with the post. And you may be asking, why don't I just use the winch on the Jeep? Well, it's way more powerful than you need and you could get overzealous on the button and just rip or break a post right out of the ground. and. I'm so used to doing it with the, the come along. I kind of know when I'm at my limit. So as this fence starts to stand itself up, just keep, keep adjusting it so that it's going vertical. Make sure it's over. And there isn't really a magic number of how tight. You just kind of get a feel for it. But generally on the come along, when it starts getting hard to pull, uh, that's when you need to stop. Okay, as you're working your way along here, if this starts to dig in, you may need to take a, a hammer and just clear this out so it has a nice open area to keep sliding along. So as you're getting it up to full tension go along and check make sure it's not hanging up anywhere along the base so you may have to go in with a 
hammer like this just to make sure that it's all down and as even as you can so that it's sliding along the ground but it looks like I'm up to tension here so now this is about how close you want to try to get it if you'd have to do one of these where I'm going to push this in and tack it off here and then I'll release the tension so I'll do that and come back in a second all right I've got this tacked off and the come alongs off and detensioned. Just need to take the bar off, but you can see here it's stayed very tight. And then just go through and put your T stake clips to uh, fasten that to those. And then just trim this off here. So at that point, now you can continue on with the next section. So we'll be doing this section here and pulling from down there back to this direction. So again, normally if this post was square to the face of the wire, you would just you know pull this direction and the pulling bar would be over on this side and you pull this way tack it off release your tension here we are set up for another pull got the come along attached and in this particular case i put the pulling bar together on the ground here I had the wire leaned up against the T-stakes and uh, it fell over. So if you get in a situation like this, if you're by yourself, uh, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get that wire leaned back up. So what you need to do is just get it close to the posts and just start cranking. And you can see the wire is getting ready to stand up. Again, when you start getting quite a bit of tension on here, just be real mindful that if this were to snap, you could have pieces flying at you so always have safety glasses on uh, <clears throat> the if the wood did break the loop here is a round wire so it would capture that but if you broke your cable here obviously that could come snapping back at you so same practices here as you would if you had a winch on a vehicle just be mindful of this cable and make sure you're inspecting it for any strands of wire that are breaking so now that the fence is starting to lean up you can just go along here and get that pushed up get the base close to the t-stakes there and just continue cranking and it'll pop up for you okay i've got the wire popped back up and we're just going to continue to crank. Okay, at this point you can see the fence will stand up even though it's not attached anywhere yet. So this is where you want to go along and make sure that there's nothing causing it to hang up. So you're going to just go along here and make sure it's not hanging up on a T-post or on a rock or a clump of dirt, anything like that. Make sure 
to check your ends there. Make sure that the staples are holding. And then just come back and keep cranking. Again, it's kind of a, a learned feel, but you are gonna crank until it's pretty difficult to pull. And when it's getting close, I'm just kind of going one click at a time. And, and then I kind of just pull to see if I feel like it would go another one. And again, you want to make sure that you're keeping this base here freed up to slide. So we free that up if it's starting to dig in and then come along, give it another click or two. And you can see the fence now wants to pop up. And when you see it getting really close to following a straight line like that, and there it actually just touched all the T-stakes. When you to that point, you are probably where you need to be. It's very difficult to pull the handle now. And even though it's sagging a little bit, it is very tight. Once you push that up against the T-stakes, and put the T-stake wire clips on, it will be very firm. So what we'll do is now move this over as close as we can get, and then go ahead and do your staples on all your wood poles, uh, probably at least two up top, and then every other one works out to where you get one at the bottom. Okay, so, um, but obviously start at the bottom first and work your way up. Well, that's it for the fencing series. I hope these tips have helped you out. If you have any questions about anything that I didn't make clear or forgot, you can post it below. And thanks again for subscribing, hitting the like button, and we will see you next time.